guys and girls. I've had my eye on the Louis Ferre Pammy wig for quite some time. She is part of the Mono System collection. She has a full monofilament top. There's no lace front. She has bangs in the front. And she has this very nice layered style. I ordered this wig, paid for it myself, and I'm a little bit disappointed. This wig has a defect. It has a weft that is not sewn correctly and it actually tents up or is pointed. What makes matters worse, this particular wig does not have enough hair sewn at the back so that you can cover that. I know that this does not represent the quality that Louis Ferre produces in most of his wigs. But unfortunately, this particular wig has a defect. Now, I'm pointing it out simply to say that this is one of the disappointing and sort of nerve-wracking problems that we as wig wearers face. You spend $290 something dollars, $300 dollars on a high quality wig and then when you receive it with a defect there's always a great deal of anxiety because you have to pay for the return shipping. There may be a restocking fee. You know, there's a lot of cost that comes along with returning a wig that has a problem. Let's take a look at this wig and we'll go ahead and give her a review. Here is how Pammy arrives in the box. Pammy's wig cap has a polyurethane tape tab to help keep it secure. The monofilament top is hand knotted and super fine and you can see you've got just a really nice range of parting options with this monofilament top. The ear tabs are adjustable. You have hook type adjustable straps in the back and a fabric line nape. So here is Pammy. She is a layered style. She has these bangs that feather to the side and a monofilament top so you could part her the right, the center, or the left. Strange tag hanging on a weft that's just hanging back here. Now I don't know if this is some kind of tag for the fact that this wig is not perfect, that there was a problem with this wig, and for some reason it was sent to be distributed anyway. I have never seen something like this in a wig before, so I don't know what to make of that. Right here, I don't know if you can see it, but while this wig has bangs, and of course you would wear the bangs down, I don't know what the problem is right here coming to the ear tab, but it's extremely rough and it's a little painful to wear against my head. Very strange. The cap itself is very tight and I do not have the adjustable straps moved. I have an average size head. So my conclusion at this point is that this wig was a complete mess, a complete defect, and never should have been sent out to the public for purchase. The fiber, this is synthetic. It's a mode acrylic. It's very silky to the touch. I think it does a very good job of mimicking human hair. There is no lace front. And so you have just bangs in the front, and this is the hairline. Let's take a look at this wig from all sides. Here is the front, left side, 
the back. Right side. It's the front measures 4.5 inches. The crown measures 16 inches. The nape measures 18 inches. It weighs 7 ounces, so it has quite a bit of weight to it, but it's not overly dense. Now this particular color is 140 slash 22 gold blonde. It's best described as a light blonde that's blended with light red and pale blonde highlights. So it is a gold color, very warm blonde. Here is Pammy in the color 14022 out in natural light. Pammy, I would love to hear your experiences with the wig, how you like the monofilament top and the bangs. I don't feel that this particular wig is made properly, and so I can't get a clear picture of Pammy. <laughs> and I'd love to learn your thoughts on her because I'm obviously going to have to purchase another wig of Pammy and hopefully get one that is well constructed and does not have defects. If you have any questions about this particular wig, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching my wig review. Take care. Bye-bye.